This is the CUNYCAST, smart voices, good stories, and thought-provoking conversation from the City University of New York. I'm Rick Firstman. That's Harrison Sheckler and his virtual choir and symphony with a song as American as it gets that he and millions of others long to hear in this strange and gloomy year. Harrison's a master's student in piano at Brooklyn College's Conservatory of Music, and back in the spring he created one of the pandemic's early internet smashes when he brought together 300 singers and musicians from 15 countries for a stirring virtual performance of Rodgers and Hammerstein's You'll Never Walk Alone. The videos had more than 1.1 million views on YouTube. For Take Me Out to the Ball Game, he assembled another 200 strong, featuring nearly two dozen current and former major leaguers. We've got links to both videos on our episode page, so if you haven't seen them yet, check them out, and then come right back to hear my conversation with Harrison about how he did it and why. Harrison Sheckler, welcome to the CUNY Cast. Um, you're a Brooklyn College graduate music student, but you're coming to us today from a place far, far away from New York. I am. I'm coming from the great city, Charles City, Iowa, of 7,500 wonderful people. How on earth did you get to to Brooklyn College, Brooklyn, New York, from Charles City, Iowa? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I started piano lessons and uh, music lessons here in Charles City with a local piano teacher. I then went to Warper College, which was about 30 miles south of Charles City, Iowa, in Waverly. And I studied violin and piano there through my freshman year. And then I transferred to the Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music for my undergrad in piano performance. That's a very prestigious conservatory. Uh, yeah. Yes, I uh, really enjoyed my time there. And then I, um, I came across Professor Jeffrey Beagle, who is an acclaimed concert pianist and teacher, and I wanted to study with him. So that's how I um, came to Brooklyn College and the conservatory, and, uh, and now I'm doing my master's there. So you began the, uh, the master's program in piano performance at Brooklyn College last fall, and things are going great, and then comes March, and you find yourself, like everyone else, headed home and hunkered down. And then you had this idea. <laughs> that's correct. Uh, This past semester, this spring semester, um, I'm on scholarship to accompany the Brooklyn College Choir, and I was helping them prepare for a week of concerts with the New York Philharmonic. And as so many other things, uh, our week of concerts was canceled, unfortunately. And I felt so, you know, so bad for the students that worked so hard to prepare for this concert and for uh, Dr. Malcolm Merriweather, who is the conductor of the choir, you know, just to have this incredible opportunity just taken away from them all of a sudden. Um, so I flew home. Um, we Originally, we thought we were going to be, um, Brooklyn College was just going to have like a two-week delay, and then we thought we were going to come back, you know, maybe in April right. um, to continue studies. But I flew home March 14th, home to Charles City, Iowa, and I, I can remember the day. It was March 18th. Um, you know, I was I was missing having that opportunity to collaborate with my fellow musicians, And I wanted to create a way that I could still collaborate with them, but from the safety of, uh, you know, our own homes. And I looked online and I saw so many people were doing these virtual collaborations. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. Maybe I could do that too. So uh, I researched it. And uh, one one of the uh, people who really made it popular, who's probably uh, most known for these virtual choirs, is the uh, choral composer Eric Whitaker. And if you look him up on YouTube, his his collaborations are just ginormous. Um, his I think his last uh, his last virtual choir video just released I think in the past couple weeks, and it has over thirteen thousand people <laughs> from around the world singing his own um, composition, and wow. it, it's just beautiful, beautiful. So, you know, when I first sought out to do something like that, I was like, well. Something that big's not going to happen with, uh, you know, this little college student from Iowa. But <laughs> uh, I reached out to some Brooklyn College uh, musicians and friends. And then I also reached out to some of my friends at the Cincinnati uh, Conservatory asking if they would like to sing in it. They loved the idea. So they were joining in. We had, 
you know, by the end of March, I probably had around 20 people. So I was like, oh, this is going to be a nice, a nice ensemble. I should say the song that I picked is my favorite musical theater song of all time. Uh, it's Rodgers and Hammerstein's You'll Never Walk Alone from the musical Carousel. Right. And I just believe the words are just, one, so beautiful. Essentially, they're timeless because uh, it, it, they really go along with so many different situations. But especially uh, what we're going through in 2020, I think the words really have a new meaning. Um, you know, when you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. Um, at the end of the storm is a golden sky and the sweet silver song of a lark. Walk on, walk on with hope in your heart and you'll never walk alone. So, I mean, it's so beautiful. Um, so anyway, that's, that's the song I picked. People loved the selection. And so at the end of March, like I said, we had about 20 people and I started realizing that, wow, there are a lot of people, um, a lot of musicians and artists around the world that are also not able to collaborate with uh, fellow musicians because, you know, we're all on lockdown. And so I opened the project up to people outside of just my friend group. I posted it on Facebook music groups, and we started getting so many singers involved. And then I approached uh, Dr. Malcolm Merriweather, the choral director, and he, you know, at the time, he was, all the professors at Brooklyn uh, College were trying to put together their online learning because by April, we learned that we weren't going back to school in person, that we were going online. So he loved the idea. He incorporated my project in his online curriculum. And then he also said, Harrison, you know, I think the orchestra would love this too. Do you have an orchestral arrangement? And I said, well, I just, <laughs> I just have the, uh, just have my piano company, but so I spent a, a few days and I arranged my own version of, uh, you'll never walk alone for orchestra and choir. And I sent those parts to professor George Rothman, the orchestral director at uh, Brooklyn college. And he loved the idea. He incorporated it in his online learning. And so that really boosted the numbers. So by around Easter, uh, you know, so uh, about a month already on this little project that really started growing, we had close to 100 people involved. And then it just started, my project started getting shared like crazy. I had posted on my website how you could participate. And I think so many people were just looking for an opportunity to collaborate. And it was just perfect timing and really needed in the community uh, the artist community. And so people were sharing it all across the world. And the final product that you see that debuted May 1st, uh, I'm proud to say has over 300 people, um, musicians and uh, singers. Right. Singing, You'll Never Walk Alone. And, they, and they're from, from, from many countries, right? Yeah, over 15 different countries. I mean, we have people from, uh, you know, South America. We have uh, you know, many of the European uh, countries, um, Africa, it, it's, it, it's amazing. I, I was just amazed at how many people came together all over the world to participate in this little project, right. um, that I started.
So how did you how did you put it together? I mean, you've got um, three hundred people individually mm -hmm. um, playing or singing, and they're sending you a a video of themselves. Yeah, that's correct. So it's really a simple process. Uh, the way it works is I have the accompaniment and I have it posted on my website. And at the beginning of that recording of the accompaniment, there are four claps. Uh, you hear me count one, two, three, four, and then clap four times. So the singers, um, also on my website, I posted the, you know, the scores that they could sing their parts to along with, um, and so they would clap along with the audio, and that helps the audio engineers line up the tracks. And uh, that was the same concept for the instrumentalist. So anyway, they would use their cell phone to record their video, and it would record their audio, and then they would listen through earbuds, um, you know, using a different uh, device to hear the piano track. So we would, so essentially on the video, it looks like they're singing a cappella or playing, you know, just, right. so we just have their audio track. So anyway, what I did after kind of, kind of what we're doing, kind of like what we're doing right now. Yeah, exactly. Exactly what we're <laughs> doing right now. We have, uh, for the people that can't see, we have our own mics set up to, um, our own laptops and computers and we're talking through uh, a phone right now. So, <laughs> uh, we're being pretty savvy right now with our, our technology, Right. but, um, no. So yeah. So what I, I had two friends from the Cincinnati conservatory music that were commercial music production majors when I was there. And now they have their own studio in Cincinnati. And so I reached out to them, uh, saying, Hey, would you be interested in possibly mixing and mastering, you know, some tracks for a virtual choir? Well, little did they know that I'd be sending them 300 different tracks, uh, <laughs> to mix and master. Um, uh, it was quite, uh, a project for them in Endeavor. I, they said they spent 30 hours. Um, I should say their names. It's Armin Meyer and Grant Bear. They really made the magic happen with this project because they spent, you know, those hours just making sure every, all the voices are balanced, all the strings sound great. Right. Because you have to realize not everyone's recording their parts on professional equipment. Like I said, they're using their cell phones. Sure. But I think if you listen to it, I think uh, I think Grant and Armin did a really good job. Well, uh, uh, definitely. And I want to, uh, just, just to say that our listeners, uh, we, we have a link to the, um, the video uh, on our episode page, and everybody should, should watch that. In fact, uh, Watch it before you listen to this. It may be too late for that. But um, so when you when when you when you told uh, when you told them there were three hundred, what they say? Well, it was it was over a process. When I first started off, I said, "Oh yeah, yeah, we'll probably have about fifty people." You know, um, it looks like it's going well. And then I added the Brooklyn College Choir and Orchestra, and they're like, "Oh, okay, so you just doubled your numbers." Um, well, this is good. Yeah, we could do this. And then, and then when, when the project started getting shared across the world, they're like, holy cow, um, this is a lot. But uh, I, actually, I think they were really excited because they've never done something like this before. And right. we were just, you know, when you keep adding layer upon layer of all these voices and, uh, you know, on the orchestra track, when it all comes together, in a way, it is like a little magical moment for us because, okay, for one... I think I listened to You'll Never Walk Alone literally over a thousand times because I, I listened to, <laughs> you know, each each voice part, each recording at least twice. So there's, you know, 600 listens there. So um, and then sometimes three times. So I, I heard the song. So after a while, you know, it's my favorite song, like I said, musical theater song. But do you still love it? Uh, I still love it. <laughs> I love it now. You know, now that now that the project's done. But during the process, you be, you kind of become immune to the the impact, and you're kind of like, well, oh, well, I just can't wait till this project's done. So you know, I have a little bit of normalcy and um, some time. But once everything came together, actually, the moment I heard, the moment they sent me the finished audio track that I could combine with the video that I was editing, I was just amazed. I, I forgot how beautiful the song was because I listened to it a thousand times. And But when I heard all those voices coming together, it was amazing. And then when you pair it with the video and you see all of these faces 
joining in the song. I mean, it's, it, it was really beautiful. It, it really was my, my heart's so full that so many people wanted to take part of it. And the response has just been amazing. Um, like I said, I wasn't looking, my motive wasn't to have some viral video. Um, I, I wanted to just collaborate with my, my friends at Brooklyn college and create a safe way to do that from home. And, um, you know, I guess the rest is history, but, uh, it, so when did you, uh, when, when did it, um, when did you post it? So it debuted May 1st. Yep. So I started with the idea March 18th and then it debuted May 1st is when we had the, that was a Friday. We had that finished. And, and were you watching the numbers? I mean, cause now the, the views on YouTube are well over a million, right? A million. What's the current count? Um, I haven't looked honestly in the past week, but uh, the last I looked, I think it was a million, a hundred thousand something. So I mean, which <laughs> that uh, I still can't wrap my head around. That's crazy, that. right? That's just yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. It is crazy. Um, and you were watching the numbers tick up, and more and more people. How did that feel? Honestly, I to be honest with you, I was so nervous for the premiere because, like I said, it started off as a small project, and I didn't think. I thought, you know, maybe some friends and family would see it. But then when I did the premiere and I had 300 people, you know, counting on me to make something, I guess, uh, worthy of their time, yeah. you know, that, it, it adds some pressure. But the response, they everyone loved it. Um, and the response was so great. And to see the numbers go up, that was pretty amazing, too. And just, uh, you know, the people that were contacting me, I honestly received probably close to a thousand messages over all different social, social media channels of people just saying how much it meant to them. Uh, actually, uh, it, one of the, uh, one of my favorite messages was from one of the, uh, the singers from in the choir. Uh, she was from France and because they were locked down in France, she wasn't, uh, able to visit her parents who I think lived about a hundred miles away. Um, and so this project, uh, gave them an opportunity that they could sing together virtually, huh. even though they couldn't see each other for so many, you know, over a month. Wow. Um, and so when they, I, I put, I knew that they were related. And so I put their two videos together in the video, uh, right next to each other. And when she saw that she was actually FaceTiming her father and her mother, um, when they first watched the debut and they were all in tears, um, and it, it was just really touching to see, and I was so thankful I could, uh, you know, bring a little peace and comfort uh, to them during this crazy time. Right, and it's, it, you know, the the whole kind of communal, virtual, um, you know, participation that's been happening in these last four or five months um, mm-hmm. is, is really something. What, what do you think it is that just kind of grabs people? To, to get involved in it and then, then, you know, watch it a million over a million people watching it. Well, I think just human nature is that we love, we love interaction, social interaction with people and to have that just ripped from us, that opportunity, you know, where we're all on lockdown, I think it was just a shock to everyone. Right. And people were so, I mean, that was the thing. I think people wanted that interaction. And so this uh, gave musicians away and so many other people, I mean, they're, if not just my project, but there are so many people online who made beautiful creations, virtual creations, um, during this pandemic that I, you know, I encourage you to go watch because, uh, they're really beautiful works of art, but I, it, it has brought so many people together. Um, and you know, I, th- I think another thing too, is even in these darkest times, there are so many good things that can come out of it. You know, if we just change our mindset and look you know, it, we watch these signs, we see what good has come out of it. I would say for me, yes, my project was a good thing, a positive thing that showed, you know, the unity, um, uh, of, you know, human nature that, that we want to come together and, right. uh, still share our talents. But I think if you look not even just in the arts, you look in the science, uh, the sciences and, um, you know, with healthcare workers too, they're coming up with so many amazing, uh, things and uh, creative ways of, you know, solving problems that, uh, you know, those might not have come 
if the pandemic wasn't here. So, I mean, I don't wish the pandemic on anyone, but if you look at the positive, there are a lot of great things that are coming from this. And I think if you look 10 years from now, I think you're going to see so many amazing um, creations from artists and musicians and from uh, people in different fields. Right. By the way, I'm curious, did did you have to get any uh, permission for the rights from the um, Rogers and Hammerstein estate? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. So I actually contacted the people that own the rights and I said, you know, hey, I'm doing this virtual collaboration and I'd like to just post it on YouTube. Um, you know, I'm not going to go out and make a CD or something with it. And uh, they just wrote back, uh, hey, Harrison, uh, if you do covers on YouTube of our music, that's perfectly fine. I guess there's a certain um, uh, exemption for some things that you post on YouTube if they're, mm -hmm. you know, your own arrangement yeah. or cover. And I right. Well, it's, yeah. it's it's nice to it's nice to know that they didn't come after you for money. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, they probably enjoyed the attention uh, to their music. So <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Right. Right. So, so then uh, a, f a few months, a couple months, I guess, go by, and then you, you have this other idea. Yeah. You know, I'm the kind of person that I'm always going on to the next thing. Um, I have, <laughs> I actually have a big idea journal, Harry's Big Ideas. <laughs> and uh, I just write down things that, you know, I would eventually like to accomplish or possibly pursue. And one of my ideas was taking my love for baseball. I'm a huge baseball fanatic, and then taking that and combining it with my love for music. Um, and I didn't know exactly how I would do that, but I thought, well, you know, we're still going through the pandemic. We still have to, you know, social distance. Maybe I could do another virtual choir project. So actually, it was the end of May when I reached out to former Major League Baseball star and World Series champion Bronson Arroyo. Mm. Um, who, you know, pitched for the Boston Red Sox and is actually uh, most known for his time with the Cincinnati Reds. Anyway, he uh, recently retired, um, I think in 2018, if I'm uh, mistaken. But he, he, so he recently retired. He's just a little over 40 years old and he is a rocker at heart. He, uh, he loves to sing. He has his own Bronson Arroyo band and uh, he's actually collaborated with Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam. Um, you know, so, I mean, this is a, a talented guy and I, th I think it's funny because one of the, one of the sayings is, uh, so many musicians wish they could be a baseball player and so many baseball players wish they could be a musician. Mm -hmm. Well, this guy has done both and he's done both pretty darn well. Um, so you knew, so you knew that he was, uh, in, in music now after retiring from baseball and, and, and that's why you reached out to him to try to. To do something with him? Yes, that's correct. So I reached, um, kind of by default, I became a Cincinnati Reds fan. Um, uh, you know, don't don't tell Bronson and the other guys, but I'm actually a diehard Chicago Cubs fan. Being in Iowa, that's... Yeah, well, like growing up in Iowa, that's... Oh, that's the... Well, we have, the, you know, we have their AAA affiliate in Des Moines, the Iowa Cubs. Huh. Um, and so, yeah, so we're... You either... In, in Iowa, you're usually rooting for the Chicago Cubs, or in the American League, you're rooting for the Minnesota Twins. Hmm. So, um so yeah, so I grew up as a Chicago Cubs fan, but then when I went to uh, the Cincinnati Conservatory, um, you know, I became a Cincinnati Reds fan because actually the ballpark um, is t only two miles away from from campus. So honestly, um, if I wasn't in the practice room, you could probably find me at a Cincinnati Reds home game. <laughs> uh, yeah, I spent a lot of time there. Um, but anyway, so... I found out about Bronson and his music, and so I just reached out to him with this big idea I had of doing a virtual um, rendition of Take Me Out to the Ball Game. And so I sent him a message end of May, didn't hear for him, from him for a few weeks, and then he wrote back and said, I love this idea, give me a call. And was the idea, was the idea that, that there would be a baseball season and you would, you would sort of do this when that happened? Well, I think, yeah, I mean, I think they were in still... Uh, or was it like you know wishful? <laughs> it was it was wishful. Um, I know that um, you know the commissioner of baseball and uh, the players' organization. They were going back and forth about if they wanted to have a season. Uh, this was in June, so we were either way. What I wanted to do, like with my music, I it, you know it sounds a little hokey um, or, or cheesy maybe, but 
really what I want to do is I want to reach so many audiences. Um, you know, I'm a classical music musician at heart, but there are so many different genres that I like to explore. And I, you know, I want to, I want to reach many people of all ages with my music and, uh, you know, incorporate them if I can. Um, so what I wanted to do is create an opportunity for baseball fans to participate in a project, uh, you know, from the safety of their own homes, you know, when they would have to cheer their favorite teams from home because they can't go to games now. So Bronson loved this idea and uh, we started working on it. And uh, I also, I asked him, I said, Hey, do you think, you know, maybe some of your, you know, your friends from your playing days would be interested in singing in it? Now you have to understand Bronson can sing, but all these other baseball players have never done any singing before. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're pure athletes. Now, some of them actually, you know, were pretty good, but uh, a lot of them were really nervous. So it took some uh, <laughs> uh, convincing to get them on board. But Bronson was great right. in inviting his friends. And then I reached out to um, just a bunch of different baseball players, broadcasters, affiliates to join our project. Um, and then I also reached out uh to many of the singers that participated in the You'll Never Walk Alone video, see if they wanted to do another fun little collaboration. And many people joined, and um, it, it, it turned out fantastic. Well, you know, there's a rich tradition of, of baseball players singing really badly um, publicly. <laughs> and, and, you know, and I'll, I'll take you back to way before your time. The 69 Mets, um, a bunch of them were on Miracle the Miracle Mets. Yeah, the Miracle Mets uh, on, on the Ed Sullivan show singing, I, don't, I think singing the Meet the Mets song. And it's, um, <laughs> you know, it's pretty, pretty hilarious, pretty terrible, but, but lots of fun. Um, so h- how, many, um, how many ball players either re- active, did, were there active uh, players who, who were on this? There were, there were. And there were actually, so we, in total, I think we had just a little over 20 baseball players and affiliates, uh, current and former baseball players. Um, some of the current ones, um, one off the top of my head is Nick Goody, who is a pitcher for the Texas Rangers. Um, if you watch the video, he's the player who's standing in the new Texas Rangers ballpark in mm. the outfield, turning around his cap, you know, root for the home team. So you have to look out for that. Uh, we had pitcher for the San Diego Padres, Matt Strom. Uh, he, uh, you know, was in there and joined it. Oh, and actually a big one for the Reds, uh, Aristides Aquino. Um, he was a rookie last year. Actually, I think... Uh, I may be mistaken, but if uh, for baseball fans out there, he was the guy who, you know, uh, hit 11 home runs. I think he was like the fastest to hit 11 home runs as a rookie. Um, he he was pretty hot. Right. So, uh, so I was really excited to have him on board. But I, I mean, I have former ball players like uh, Ryan Dempster. Mm-hmm. And if you watch the video, he dresses up as Harry Carey, uh, the famous Chicago yeah. Cubs announcer. And that was super fun. Uh, we have Johnny Gomes, Scooter Jeanette, uh, just a bunch of awesome people involved. Right. So, what do you what do you think about the the twenty twenty baseball season with the you know the sixty games and the uh, the fake crowd noise and and then it's already on a serious side. It's already looking kind of tenuous with the uh, Miami Marlins having to shut down after half their players tested positive. Yeah, I mean, I just saw today that uh, the the Brewers and the Cardinals had to cancel their game t- tonight, and uh, I think it was the Brewers and Cardinals, and, you know, so many different teams are canceling games, postponing, and I just saw that uh, now in August they're going to have those double headers, but they're only seven innings long. I, I think, I think um, the best thing about this baseball season is your video of Take Me Out to the Ball Game. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is very kind of you, and, uh, and and that's really what I wanted to do was just create this fun opportunity for fans because we don't know what's going to happen. Right. Well, I'm I'm sure you've got um, you know more in the Harry's Big Ideas um, bag, right? Yeah, I do. Oh, oh, I think you just it's just a matter of time before my mix my next big idea okay. uh, comes to fruition. So. You know, if if people want to participate in my next projects, you just have to, you know, follow me on social media because that's where I usually announce it. And I I would love to have anyone 
um, and everyone participate in my projects. That's great. Well, we, uh, we're we looking forward to it, and we hope that you are back in Brooklyn, back at Brooklyn College soon, and uh, we're looking for all kinds of things from you uh, in the future. Thank you so much for having me, and uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. Uh, it was great fun. Thanks for coming on. Thank you.